Hello, 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 everybody here is Dr. Gowal, again talking about different topics and science. Remember, guys, that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website, which is magazine.hme.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue or by topic. You will be asking Dr. Gowal, which topics do we have? Research community, education, care delivery hours, and achievement. The article to review today is leading during a pandemic. Two hospital leaders discuss how large healthcare systems are meeting the pandemic challenges. After more than two years of battling COVID-19 surges, supply and staffing shortages, and speaking operational costs, hospital administrators are evaluating lessons learned and which pandemic really challenges will be retained. We talk about this and other topics with Paul Ramsey, he's a medical doctor, CEO of the UW Medicine Executive Vice President for Medical Affairs and Dean of the University of Washington School of Medicine and Peter S. Levin, he's a medical doctor too of Harvard Medical School Professor of Healthcare Policy who has and also was the president of Massachusetts General Hospital from 2003 to actually. From Cambridge, Massachusetts at Harvard University Medical School, I want to remind guys that you can download this beautiful article from the official website at the magazine of Harvard Medical School. The title of this article, I repeat again, leading during a pandemic. Alright, so I continue doing the review. Now this is a question that the magazine is doing to the uh these doctors, right? Remember, one is from the Washington School of Medicine and the other one is the president of the Massachusetts General Hospital and also is a professor of Harvard Medical School. You each have said that referring to large healthcare system as academic medical center with a clinical research and educational triple mission is an accurate description of your institutions, that the truth mission is to improve the health of the public. Could you describe how population health came central to your institution mission and statements. Remember, this is a question. All right, so Dr. Ramsey answers. In 1992, the University of Washington restructured uh, the leadership of our medical school and hospitals to have a single leader for an integrated health system that includes the medical school, the hospitals, the clinics, and some other nonprofit organizations. In 2000, the UW Medicine Board, which over UW Medicine, bought and obviously to endorse a single mission to improve the health of the public, meaning to improve health for all people around the world. To advance that mission, we need integrate excellence in our clinical research and learning activities, a single leader and clear mission to improve health. Alright, the same question for Dr. Sabin and he answers. For similar reasons, about 15 years ago, I recommended to our board that we change our mission statement to explicitly recognize community health as being one of our four missions available our first mission given the history of the institution. If in needed, we are here to improve health and 80% of health is driven by what happened in the community, not within our walls. Then I think it is incumbent upon us to understand those forces and be engaged in doing something about them. With this change, we create new structures within the hospital to put list the community missions, a board's commitment and executive commitment that our chief of medicine chairs and a senior vice president who is responsible for community and equity. Perhaps this more significant integration that occurring what been happening across the system that formation as mass general pregnancy system each hospital composed the health system All 
All right, guys, this is the question for both of them, the physician from Harper University and from Washington University. This is number two. These priorities are large and require significant resources. How do you balance their needs? Dr. Slavin answers, I don't see this mission in conflict with one another. They are synergic and critical to improving health. But in terms of balancing, I think it comes down to how the economics of the institution work. Of those four areas of focus, only of them, the clinical mission generates a margin. The other absorb margin or require investment to sustain them. So that does require balancing. All right, and this is the answer of Dr. Ramsey. I agree, the clinical research and learning activities are synergic and organization. We should strive to integrate them in an efficient way that promotes synergy. Our mission is to improve the health of the public and a major part of providing the best care for our people is the research that advances the acknowledge for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment because research is changing medicine so rapidly now. Lifelong learning for the entire workforce is critical. Alright guys, question number three from the magazine to both of them, Dr. Ramsey and Dr. Slavin. What other changes has the pandemic brought to your institution? Dr. Ramsey answers, I have nearly 50 years of my time in medicine and I have never ever seen so much changes and so much uncertainty as I have in the past two years. But I believe strongly that we can learn more from the changes and continue to make positive changes that are needed for me those changes fall in four areas I will start with healthcare equity and diversity equity and inclusion the pandemic has made us focus of iniquities related to COVID-19 diagnosis treatment and prevention the distribution of the vaccine enabled to identify healthcare inequities that develop solutions we have more work to do achieve healthcare equity and the answer from Dr. Slavin about this question is, Dr. Slavin said, that's a nice summary poll of what we have both been experiencing during this pandemic. I will start by saying that I have been so for both the best and the worst of times. Just seeing all the suffering of patients, many isolated from their families was incredible hard. What our caregivers has been through after three waves of COVID-19 has been truly hard. I think for the first way, adrenaline was the record level, but does adrenaline wore off in subsequent waves? This pandemic has really been stressing our workforce. Alright guys, this is the question number four of these two professionals. Remember, this question has been made by the magazine of Harvard Medical School to Dr. Slavin and to Dr. Ramsey. One of them come from Harvard University and the other one come from the Washington University. The question is, each of you have mentioned the pressure placed on members of your workforce during the past two years. Could you describe what it has been like for your workforce and what you have been doing to counter this pressure? Dr. Slavin say, I think we did more and we have done previously, but there has not been one magic bullet for this problem. Part of the issue is the psychology of our workforce and the debilitating effects of the stress they have felt in what challenging clinical situation. Adding to that stress is that facts that particularly during the Omicron surge, a significant percentage of our workforce has been sick. We have people leaving the profession because they have enough, and we have 
people who couldn't work because they were COVID positive. This has caused huge staffing short stage that has only made things worse. In terms of some of things that we have done, I think one important thing is just leadership visibility. That's something that I have tried to do from the very beginning of my tenure, but I have a step in dra dramatically during the pandemic. As did other people in leadership hospital trusts and other senior leaders who have been out there with our staff, showing them that half they were doing is incredibly important, listening to their concerts and trying to do something about those concerts. And Dr. Ramsey answers, our workforce also has faith the combination of extremely hard, stressful work and longer hours in a setting of uncertainty and change. With source after source, we wonder, will this ever go away? We have focused on enhanced communication not only for our workforce but for members of our regional community. At least quickly, we have thousands of people participating in viral thought halls and discuss changes. Is their town halls? We listen to what was working here on best practice and hear about specific challenges that we work together to address. We have never had much internal communication we have had during the past two years. We also have been reaching out a local and regional communities to determine how we can better serve vulnerable populations. Alright guys, this is question number five. What sort of financial pressure have come in with all these changes? Dr. Slavin answers, I think the strongest business pressure is the way pressure of the workforce. The other things are relative modes. One of the things that has put a lot of pressure was waived in a surprising church by nursing agencies during the pandemic. With traveling nurses double, tripling the rates, it creates difficulty with your organization staff nurses now that travelers are making twice that what they are. That's no formula for achievement, a stable wave or a stable workforce. And when you try to address the nursing wave, the dominion effort of course in other parts of the workforce where people feel that they underpay and facing short age. I left Mass General about six months ago but my understanding is that we wave pressure will have no abate. And Dr. Ramsey say the wave pressure for us were most severe in January 2022 but we expect ongoing challenges to our bushes due to the increase in workforce expenses. I I will add one thing to Peter assessment. The current reimbursement system in general doesn't abuse the increase that are needed, such as an increase in workforce expenses. The current reimbursement system doesn't recognize and incentivize programs that would make health care better and more affordable, especially for those post acute art settings, including home health care, which has been hit very hard. When we can find a post acute care settings in which patients can continue their care. We keep the patients in the hospitals. That's the tremendous expenses for our hospital system. Alright guys, this is the last question of the magazine. This is question number six from one physician who come from Washington University and the other physician who come from Harvard University. And the question is, what makes you optimistic about medicine and healthcare as we look toward a post-pandemic period? Dr. Slavin answered, I think the future of medicine is incredibly bright. There are obviously huge challenges, but I'm always inspired 
inspired by the young people who are coming into the file and how bright they are and how commitment they are to trying to help their fellow humans. I think the science of medicine have never been more exciting. And Dr. Ramsey say, when I speak with our first medical year students, I tell them that I invited them. I wish I were studying medicine now. We have the ability now to focus on healthcare equity and we recognize the mission critical of advancing our goals to acquire diversity and inclusion. We can measure population health and measuring the outcomes of healthcare in ways that I couldn't before. This ability will help achieve continuous improvement in healthcare and delivery. And then there is a salary application of what we are learning in the laboratories to improve health. That's so exciting. I think it is wonderful time to start medicine. All right, guys, this beautiful article, remember the title, Leading During a Pandemic, has been posted by Mary is the editor of Harvard Medicine Magazine. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.